In this lesson, we'll pick up where we left off in the previous lesson and add our first attributes to our two existing guitar objects. As a reminder, an attribute is a piece of data stored on an object. It is a characteristic or a detail that comprises the object's state or what makes it what it is. You can think of an attribute as a variable that belongs to the object. Attributes are also called members, fields, or instance variables in other programming languages. Attributes are public by default and can be accessed with dot syntax. When I use the word public, what I mean is that the information from the attribute is easily accessible. It's not hidden or private. Your code can just go ahead and ask the object for that piece of information and the object will give it to you. So let's go ahead and add attributes to both our acoustic guitar object and our electric guitar object. And what I'm gonna do here is actually do something that's considered an anti-pattern. It's not a great idea, but I'll explain why I'm doing it in just a second and this will lead into the next lesson. So what I want to do is I want to give my acoustic guitar object three attributes. I'm gonna do wood, strings, and year. Wood will represent the wood type that the guitar is made from, strings will represent the number of strings it holds, and year will represent the year of construction. So how do I add an attribute to an object? What I can do is take my object, in this case, it's referenced by the acoustic variable. Then to add an attribute, I'm gonna do a dot. And then after the dot, I'm going to write the name of my attribute. So let's say my first attribute was wood, so I'm simply gonna write that out. Now when it comes to attribute names, they follow the exact same conventions as variable names. So here you're gonna be dealing with a snake case. So for example, if this was wood type, you'd simply do wood type. In this case, I'm gonna to stick to wood and I'm gonna assign this attribute a string value of mahogany. Right below here, what I'm going to do is assign another attribute to my object and I'm gonna call this strings. So once again, dot strings. And this I'm gonna set equal to the number of strings on my guitar and that is gonna be six. All of these attributes, by the way, and their corresponding values are totally arbitrary, right? The Python interpreter has no idea about what a guitar really is in real life. It's just this digital construct to it, but I'm just going ahead and adding characteristics to this object that I've created from my guitar class. So I can add one more attribute here, like acoustic, and let's say we're gonna have a year of production, so I'm simply gonna call that attribute year, and let's say this guitar was constructed in 1990. You'll notice that we're adding all of these attributes after the object has been initialized for the first time. This is allowed in Python, but it's actually not valid in a lot of different programming languages. Python is a lot more open uh, compared to other languages. It's what's called a consenting adult's language, which means it allows you to do things and trusts you to do them the right way. This isn't actually the right way to do things uh, from a design perspective, and we'll talk about why that is in a second, but it is legally technically possible uh, in this language. It's not possible in many other languages. So we've, we've assigned three attributes to my acoustic guitar object. Let's go ahead and assign just one attribute to my electric guitar object. And let's say I'm going to call this attribute nickname. This is going to be an alternate name for the guitar. Again, just an arbitrary attribute, an arbitrary detail or characteristic about the guitar. And let's say I want to call my electric guitar Sound Viking 3000. Okay, so now that we've set or we've written the attributes and the corresponding values to the objects, let's see how we can actually access those existing values. The first point to note here is that these attributes exist on the objects. They are attached to each instance. So wood, strings, and year, these are attributes, and you can think of them as variables, but they are not global variables that are available anywhere. They are directly tied to this acoustic object. So I can't simply do something like print wood or print strings. We're gonna get a bunch of Python errors on the right because Python's simply gonna say, I don't know what wood is. You're, you haven't defined that variable in the file. And it is absolutely correct. There is no wood variable defined in the file. Rather, there is a wood attribute defined on the acoustic guitar object. So if I actually want to access it, it's going to be the exact same syntax. It's going to be dot syntax, but this time around, we're not gonna provide an equal sign. So you give an equal sign whenever you want to write, and you do just a basic dot syntax whenever you want to read or to get. So I'm gonna write acoustic, that's my object, then a dot, then the attribute that I want to get. So in this case, I'm gonna ask for the value of the wood attribute on my acoustic object, and here you can see we're going to get mahogany uh, right here. Afterwards, what we can do is do the exact same thing with electric, so I can do electric dot nickname. Nickname is an attribute available on my electric guitar object, and so here we're going to get sound viking 3000. We're also getting this output above, that's just coming from the print statement that runs every single time a guitar object is initialized on lines five and six. 
Okay, so what's fundamentally wrong about this design? What is undesirable about it? Well, the issue here is that certain attributes only exist on specific guitar objects. For example, the year attribute only exists on the acoustic guitar. So does, in fact, the wood and strings attribute. Similarly, the nickname attribute only exists on the electric guitar object. So if we think these guitars are the same, if we assume they are, which we generally should because they're made from the same class, uh, we're going to be surprised when we try to access an attribute that does not exist. For example, I may say, okay, I have an electric guitar object. I'm going to assume it's the same as every guitar, and I'm going to assume it's going to have a year. But then when I try to get the uh, value of that attribute, I'm going to be greeted with a Python error that says attribute error guitar object. This electric guitar object on line 17 has no attribute year. Similarly, if I have a acoustic guitar object and it's made from the guitar class and I have this uh, other example of the electric guitar and I say, okay, because my electric instance has this attribute called nickname, I'm going to assume that my acoustic instance is going to have this attribute called nickname. I will, I will run into the exact same problem. Python is going to tell me, well, this guitar object, the one that's referenced by the acoustic variable on line 18, that guitar object has no attribute nickname. So the reason that this is bad is because it defeats the entire purpose of object-oriented programming. These guitars do not share the same attributes, which means they fundamentally have a different design or interface or shape. Imagine if we had two list objects in Python, but only one of them had an append method and only one of them had something like an insert method. That inconsistency would make it incredibly difficult to write programs because we would never be certain whether we can actually work with an object, whether it can receive a message from us, be that an attribute reference or something like a method. So without consistency, it's incredibly hard to have predictability when working with objects in order to write sustainable, productive uh, software programs. So this is not a really good design. It is is not a good idea to add attributes uh, after an object has been instantiated. And this takes us back all the way to the beginning, which, what we talked about in the previous lesson, which is the purpose of init, right? The purpose of init is to initialize uh, an object, give it its initial state. That is fundamentally where we want to put the logic that we have right here on lines 8, to, 8 through 12, because that will ensure that whenever we instantiate a guitar object, it's going to have a consistent interface. It's going to have the same attributes and the same methods, regardless of um, you know, how many we create or where we create it, right? We are mandating to Python that we're going to have this idea of a guitar in our program. But in order for that to actually be relevant, in order for that to make us productive, each guitar has to be similar. If it's a completely different idea, that defeats the entire purpose of making a class. If some guitars only have wood and year and another guitar only has nickname, then there's nothing similar about them. And they represent two fundamentally different concepts. They're both guitars, but they're two different types of guitars, uh, if you think about it. So this is not a really great idea. And in the next lesson, we'll talk about how we can move this logic on lines 8 through 12 into the init method. We're going to see how we can establish more consistency and how we can enforce more similar guitars in the very next lesson. So I'll see you there.